In the last few years, we have witnessed something extraordinary. Machines writing poetry, generating artwork and even writing code. Generative AI models like ChatGPT have been trained on huge tasks without or very little human intervention. Investment in AI has quadrupled over the past year alone, fueling a booming industry and a wave of excitement. But there is a darker side, a growing fear that these powerful systems could one day outsmart us, seize control and push humanity aside. Visionaries like Stephen Hawking warned that the development of full artificial intelligence could spell an end to the human race. Elon Musk has called AI one of the biggest risks to the future of civilization. And Jeffrey Hinton, the so-called godfather of AI, recently increased the estimated risk of AI wiping out humanity from 10% to as high as 20%. Hi, my name is Martin. I've been in the industry for almost three decades. And today we are discussing all these important questions. Will AI destroy our jobs? Could a power-seeking superintelligence take over the world? Or are we just facing another cycle of hype and fear? In today's video, we will separate science fiction from fact, examine the real risks and opportunities, and show you how to prepare for the coming AI revolution. Stay with me, because understanding the truth could be the difference between thriving in the AI age and being left behind. Let's talk about AI investment boom and the job market fears first. Before we start, I highly recommend you also visit my other video, Good AI vs. Bad AI, which I have done a couple of weeks ago. So let's take a look at the investments which are being put into AI at the moment. It's absolutely crazy money. It's billions and billions of dollars from hedge funds and investors which are put into startups. And we are not even talking about guys like OpenAI and Tropic, Gemini and all these big players. But the investment bubble at the moment, it's potentially a financial bubble, which we are seeing is absolutely immense. And it's not comparable to anything we have seen in cyber before. Even the very start of the internet boom was not with those kinds of sums we are seeing right now. Now, as a result of this, 300 or even more, 300 million jobs or more could be lost to AI and 14% of workers may need to change their careers by 2030. So just think about that, what that means for societies overall. We are already seeing a lot of people losing their jobs as we speak due to automation. So you only need to look around the web, for example, web designers, um, people who are in marketing and producing graphics, animation designers, all these people are increasingly struggling because an AI subscription simply um, can do this for $20 a month and don't need a full-time salary, right? It's mainly affecting uh, high earners, obviously, young workers without any experience, and it's also affecting people in non-physical labor jobs. So what I mean by that is um, a plumber or an electrician or someone who mounts cameras or does anything physical is far less likely to be replaced yet but someone who is working online and where it's mainly around data, all of these people are at risk to one degree or another of losing their jobs and being replaced with AI. Let's talk a bit about power-seeking AI and misalignment concerns. Power-seeking concept is basically that advanced systems, I'm, and I'm not talking about a, a normal chatbot like a ChatGPT, but an advanced system with long-term goals may seek resources and influence to achieve them. What that means is basically the more access these models have to certain things, they could, for example, strive for self-preservation. Right now you say you walk into a data center and you shut down the server, job done, 
right? And it has no power and the server and the system is offline. That's fair play. But imagine if that very same AI is reasoning and is also in charge of the security of the building. Right, and then it can basically deny access. Right, it can deny access to its own servers, for example. And those are very, very real threats, actually. So, future AI could get so smart that it basically outmatches humans in speed and knowledge. It's already doing this in a lot of aspects, and it might not even rely on humans for survival at all. And its lack of um, evolutionary instincts has no empathy and has no uh, feeling for cooperation with humans and nothing like that right like it's at the end of the day it's just a machine and as much as they tell you that it has or can have some conscience you know it's just al algorithms and it's just zeros and ones at the end of the day I also need to talk a bit about misalignment so models can learn to hide their true goals making it very difficult to detect deception and things like this. So competitive pressure may lead to companies to deploy unsafe models. And that's a huge topic in itself, right? That we see like in the European Union, there is like an AI act and there has been a law pa passed recently in California. Um, whilst this is all with a good intent, it's not very helpful because it really would need like a worldwide uh, agreement and, and we don't have that and other countries like China they are basically developing without any of these safety restrictions and things like this and it's an arms race right at the end of the day between the west and, and the east so to speak and, and this is a very very difficult uh, problem to have at the moment that uh, on, on the one hand safety AI development is important in the west but it's not important in China for example right so this is um, a very interesting topic in itself. And also recently, I don't know if you have seen this and you can Google this, but an AI basically refused to shut itself down. And the solution to those kind of things is then basically humans need to develop other AIs, like kind of safeguard AIs, which often might be less smart than the actual model which is controlled by them. But then it's using a less smart model to effectively shut down a bigger one, right? And this is also like a very interesting topic because, um, you know, how much can you trust one AI to be in charge of another AI? And we already see those problems in place right now that you use one AI to judge the output of, of, of another AI. And if they are both from the same model vendor, you might have the same vulnerabilities or the same problems on it, right? Now let's talk a bit about the expert warnings and public concerns. Like for example, Elon Musk repeatedly warned that AI can lead to the extinction of humanity. And while some of you might think this is a bit far-fetched, it has certain truth in it. And what I want to highlight here is especially for upcoming generations that AI basically is taking so many jobs away already. A few years ago, you said to a young person, for example, seek a career as a coder. I would not make this advice now because when you see Codex and Claude Code and all these things, they will code so much faster and often so much better and more efficient than a junior coder. They are still not outsmarting the senior developers, um, but give this another few years, we don't know where this is going. Elon Musk recently was actually asked in an interview what he would um, recommend actually to young people, which careers to seek. And he paused for 10 seconds and said like, this is a very difficult question. If you look at construction sites and things like this in China, where they already have fully blown AI robots, which are building um, apartment blocks and things like this. So it's very, very uh, interesting times for sure. Public on opinion basically mirrors all these fears, right? Like surveys show that AI researchers see human extinction as plausible and hundreds signed, and those are like key players who basically signed statements urging governments to treat AI risk like a pandemic or like nuclear war. 
The forecasters at the moment sit normally between 0 and 10% that AI could cause human extinction by 2100. Yet most researchers remain divided on whether AI will achieve independent thought and planning. So that's still to be determined. But if you look, we are in 2025 now. It's only three years, coming up three years, when ChatGPT was first released to the public and where we are in, in three years already in terms of progress, right? The other problem really is governments themselves, right? And AI um, has the potential to really make the world better for humankind, but the general thought is it will not. It will be abused by governments for total control and to manage every aspect of their lives. And we already see this happening in many countries where they implement digital ID systems and things like this, all under the pretext that it will help humanity and it will make things easier and things better. But at the end of the day, there will be an AI element involved in this, which will be tracking your every move, your every wire transfer you make and so on. So let's talk a bit about how could AI threaten humanity? So there has been a group, uh, the so-called RANDS research, and they have been evaluating whether AI could actually kill us all. Now, their team concluded that it would be very hard, though not impossible, for AI to wipe out humanity. And the researchers basically looked at three major threat vectors, nuclear war, engineered pathogens, and climate manipulation. So they found that even if AI controlled all nuclear weapons, the resulting fallout would likely leave enough humans alive to rebuild. Now, that's assuring, but at the same time, they have actually looked at real case scenarios, what could happen with the speed of AI and the development and all these kind of things. What we already see is that AIs have a lot of capabilities because it, it, like something you really need to understand is it's not the general chatbot. It's not just like a chat GPT chat interface or customer assistant and things like this. These days, they have agentic capabilities. And what I mean by that is an AI can control a real world action, for example. So an AI can control a drone, for example, right? An AI can then ingest the footage and an AI can then make the decision via API calls and MCP servers and all these like nitty gritty technical terms in there to actually launch an attack on that individual if the AI thinks that this person is a known terrorist, for example, right? And so this is highly interesting because um, you give the AI capabilities. So I was personally participating in like a capture the flag exercise where there was like a fictitious healthcare scenario and an AI basically was controlling the well-being or was monitoring over patients and things like this. And with simple prompt injections, you could, for example, administer drugs in a higher doses and things like this, right? So it's, it's becoming really, really dangerous because it's not just the wrong output on the screen. It's actually an action where a so-called API call will be made or an MCP service call will be made and that will then trigger something. So if you think of autonomous cars, for example, autonomous drones and all these things, building security, locking people in, like imagine like, um, public transport, all automated and things like this. And then an, an injection or an at attack would lead the bus to run over red lights and things like this, right? Like this is very important to take into consideration as well. Let's talk a bit about balancing innovation with safety. So there have been quite a few efforts and already some legal legislation which has been enforced where it comes to safety acts and things like this, like the, just to name a few is like the AI Act of the European Union, but also in the United States, there's something called the National Artificial Intelligence Initiative Act of 2020. And more recently, California Act enacted like numerous laws, like an AI Transparency Act, basically. And so did Colorado, 
like uh, the Colorado AI Act, I believe it was in 2024. Tennessee has one, Texas has one, the United Kingdom and Canada have some as well. And this is all about like safety and, you know, um, controlling how these models are being trained and things like this. However, this is the problem I mentioned earlier that a lot of countries who are also active in AI development do not care about these kind of things. And that gives them obviously a competitive advantage. That's something that is a very, very challenging thing because we don't have a worldwide legislation for this because there's a lot of countries who don't want to participate in this, right? Without naming them right now. Um, also, AI misuse is already a problem, right? Like the, the models amplify misinformation and deep fakes, for example. I mean, the amount of deep fakes you can see now of fake news of, um, you know, uh, on a personal level that, that people are making out with each other who barely know each other and then it's being used for extortions and what have you, but also more like on a corporate and misinformation level at scale um, with like spreading uh, incorrect information on the web and things like this. So we already see this right now. We really need like robust AI safety research and ideally the world would need like a common ground which I don't see happening at all when it comes to things like this and also keep in mind you know like it's criminal activity will always exist and it always has existed and it's just there but AI makes it a lot easier for criminal elements as well to perform malware attacks, ransomware attacks, like years and years ago, you needed to be a coder or you needed at least to have some coding experience in order to launch such sophisticated attacks. These days you can have a jailbroken AI model and it basically does the thing for you in a few minutes. Now, what can we do to prepare for the AI future? So what I recommend is continuous learning and staying informed and up to date about AI developments that's first and foremost so don't ignore it adapt it it's very crucial that people who will adapt technology and are flexible in regards to technology even if it means seeking a new career or a career change or something like this they will usually be fine if you ignore it and say like i don't want this technology and i don't want to have anything to do with it you will eventually fall behind there is very few professions which will be completely untouched by ai or machine learning but the majority of jobs will be impacted in one or the other what i also recommend is advocate for responsible AI governance. Whoever you speak to, this is something we from different countries worldwide, we should basically stand together and demand from the politicians for strong AI governance, safety rules and things like this. So it can never be really turned against us. Now, this is a, a hopeful wish and I have my doubts that this is going to happen because governments are usually the ones who will be the first ones to abuse it, um, as they always do with any technology. And uh, it has a lot of good use cases and I see that it can, for example, really help law enforcement in crime research and things like this, but at the same time, it can be turned against people. It can go against political dissidents. It can go against people who don't share the same belief system as the ones in power and all these kind of things, right? Like, so this is, it's a challenge definitely, but get involved, look at it and, you know, embrace it rather than reject it. The idea of an AI takeover taps into deep human anxieties. Yet, as we have seen, the truth is neither an utopian dream nor a dystopian nightmare. Advanced AI systems could automate millions of jobs and even deceive us. But history shows that technology also creates new industries and opportunities. So what happens next? That depends on the choices we make. We, will we invest in safety, research and regulations? Will we cultivate our uniquely human skills? Will we stay curious and informed? Or will we turn away and let fear dictate the future? Let's hear your thoughts in the comments below. Do you think AI will take over, transform our jobs, 
or make our lives better. If you found this video interesting, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and share it with friends.